Mm -hmm. Welcome to Airtime with Agnes Kru Yoga, the podcast, my podcast for yoga teachers mm -hmm. to inspire your you and your work. But as we are all also teachers, we are all students, so also for us practitioners to inspire you on your path to, to apply yoga and to live your yoga. Um, my name is Agnes, Agnes Kroszynska, a Mallorca-based yoga teacher. And I actually don't want to talk so much about me. You can read up everything on my social media, uh, Agnes Kru Yoga. And I would really like this podcast to be about my guests. So I'm very honored to welcome today's guest. It's Amrita Madevi from Flowing Wakefulness Ayurveda. She is a Mallorca-based Ayurveda therapist and teacher, mother of three, <laughs> that's impressive, and married to a Russian spiritual teacher. And I know that they were living already in different countries in the world, like the US mm. and uh, Central America. But I've chosen now Mallorca as their home, what I also understand. <laughs> and so she's really knowledgeable. She even surprises me again and again with Ayurveda, with things I didn't know at all. And so I'm really looking forward to this conversation. But besides of being knowledgeable, she really lives Ayurveda with every single pore of her body and fiber of her being. So please, let's welcome Amrita Madevi with a big applause. Here she is, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. So um, you often, or you said, mentioned that you're described as a yogini, vixen in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, yes. And a uh, planned uh, lover or medicine woman. Those are all descriptions with mine also from others. Could you please... Describe yourself with your own words. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think that um, fairly normal, and and yet still, I have managed to kind of leave everything that my English upbringing would have maybe cemented me into being in a certain box, and I've managed to carve out. A life of harmony and peace, inner bliss, which uh, I think is un not very normal, especially in this day and age. Uh, many people that I see come into my practice have anxiety and overwhelming depression or sense of dullness and heaviness and confusion about their life. And I, so I feel very fortunate that I have found Ayurveda and I do, I am on a mission because I want to share this with others. I really feel that it's fundamental and uh, should be taught in schools. I agree. We just yeah. had a conversation about that, definitely. Yeah, thank you. So Ayurveda for me as a yoga teacher, Ayurveda and yoga are very close. Well, it's always called the sister science of yoga. So I kind of assume that yoga teachers know at least a little bit the basis of, of Ayurveda. But could you describe in very few sentences Ayurveda to those who have no idea about Ayurveda? Yes. Well, Ayurveda is a medicinal system from India. And they estimate it to be around 5,000 years old, but it could be more, much older than that. It's an ancient medical system and so it encompasses the universal truths of yoga with the matter of living a daily existence in harmony with its environment because we know that we there's constant change happening on the external surface level of life and we even to the day we have the sun and the moon their cycles guiding us through each moment 
And so Ayurveda is a map of those systems to help us navigate and to help us um, balance, come back into balance at every moment, at every station of these transitions so that we can live in harmony. Beautiful set. Thank you. And I also think there's a little, might be a little misconception of your uh, Ayurveda, that it's just about uh, vata, pitta, kapha. Do you say kapha actually or kappa? Kapha. 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 Mm-hmm. kapha. Good. So that there's this misconception of being just vata, pitta, kapha. No, but it's mm-hmm. so much more. No, but and we'll come later to that. But could you also describe briefly those uh, three concepts? As okay. it often starts, there, right? Yes, absolutely. And so everything within nature has been made out of the five elements. This is some of the Ayurvedic philosophy. So of these five elements, they are ether air, water, right, fire, water, and earth. And you can get a sense of knowing them from looking outside of you, but also interesting to note is that they are within you. They're within every uh, piece of matter. So from the rock to the raindrop, there's a certain amount of these elements in each um, manifested material that we have here. And so within ourselves, you can see that as like air is our soul. Mm -hmm. Uh, Air is the breath that we take, the cavities that are in our gut the nasal cavities, our lungs, the spaces in the body, the womb. And then we have uh, air, fire, fire as our digestion, our metabolism, the way that we discern things and that we look at things. Yeah, so we're using our senses um, they, as the windows of these five elements. Then we have uh, air. No, we've done air. Yeah, air. Water. Water. Water is our plasma, right? Mm-hmm. Carries that healing, rejuvenating you know, water to any thing that needs to be healed. Um, our blood, also fluid, the synovial fluid of our spine and our joints and then we have earth earth is the solidity of the body the structure the bones and the matter of meat of it meat on the bones so we can when we look at ayurveda it's of course this looking of um the external but also noting that that is within us as well so in the environment so it is within our physiology and as i mentioned before we've got varying degrees of these five um, elements within us and to encompass that it's called tree dosha so the doshas are made out of these five elements So if someone is more air and wind, sorry, air and ether, they are said to be more embodying vata qualities. Vata dosha is very mobile, is very light, very subtle, you know, as the wind, as the air, it's very cold, very dark. And then we have water and yeah water and fire but predominantly fire and that is pitta dosha pitta to be able to metabolize and uh, to break down and to discern 
and have perception over things, we have pitta. That's why we say it's in the eyes. Someone that has a lot of pitta will generally have redness in their eyes. And then kapha, kapha dosha is air, I mean earth <laughs> and water. Earth and water, the heaviest of all of the doshas, the most groundest, grounded and um, earthy. So let's just say we, to explain this a little bit further, if we had a party and we were to invite, uh, we were to throw a party, the person that would have the idea of having a party in the first place would be Vata Dosha. Butters are very sociable, they're enthusiastic, they're moving, they're mobile. They would speak to everyone in the party, make sure that everyone's got their, uh, the things that they need and speaking to the right people. That's like the hostess with the mostess. Just to give you a visual kind of image of these doshas. And then you have Pita. Pita would be the one that is having the intellectual conversations they're very uh, well researched and they are extremely um, charming, charismatic, confident pitas. And then, if we had a kapha person there, they would be, <laughs> they would be more loving and laughing, and they would have this lustrous hair and big shiny bright eyes and they're very they're amazing friends to have you want more kappa friends because they're just lovable they love they're lovely to be around as well and so there's a visual of how that would look like in maybe yourself maybe you can notice some of those qualities that we have within you of recognizing these oceans so not everyone is just one dosha. May, uh, quite often we're two doshas. Very rarely we're all three doshas at the same time and have a balanced amount of those qualities in us. But you can do a quiz or if you come to see someone like me, then we'll That's take my next question. question. Do you have a quiz? Actually? That's right. So there is a dosha quiz that I have on my website. Dosha quizzes can be a yeah, little bit. Show tricky. your website for a moment. There it yes. is. Yes. So there on this website, they'll find a dosha quiz for those who That's don't know it. yet what constitution they have, right? Yes. Yes. Good. And so uh, when you when you fill out a dosha quiz, it's very important to uh, fill it out twice. And the reason why we do that is because we are finding out what our nature is by birth. Everyone um, has a, a dosha at birth. Mm -hmm. You could call it your prakruti or you could call it your nature. And then what happens is that all these influences from the environment, these changes that we talked about earlier, impact on the dosha that we get our prakriti our our nature and this is where you need to fill it out a second time so the first time is as you can always remember yourself being from a child and the second time that you fill it out would be what is your current situation how you currently feel. okay to see how nature has impacted on you and made an imbalance taking you away from your nature that makes sense i i didn't know that thank you so we are in mid of october what season because it's not just about us having those uh, elements in us and nature so also seasons have a tendency of, of those elements right so mid of october and what uh on the northern hemisphere okay. exactly this changed um, yeah uh what season or what uh element is dominant right now and what does it mean for our habits for our for ayurvedic rituals 
Right. So the change of season, the junctions of the change of seasons, like we're at now, you can sense. You can sense. And this is one the thing about Ayurveda is that it encourages you to be an observer of your environment, really to notice. And that, of course, means that we need to slow down. But anyway, you will notice that there is crispiness in the air, that skin may be feeling drier, maybe it's getting colder earlier, darker earlier. Um, things are a little bit rough and dry. So, so it's, so it's fantastic. Exactly. Perfect, perfect, yes. So this so, is a situation with Vata. And you can see that because Vata is this master of change and movement and mobility. So it's taking us away from the summer, the heat, the pitta season that we've just had into a transition of cold, extreme cold, you know, heaviness, dullness, kapha season. So this means for Ayurvedic uh, lifestyle or rituals that right now is the time, for, especially for people who have a vata consistent uh, constitution, to actually take yeah. care and to eliminate vata enhancing the um, diet and lifestyle yeah. changes exactly. So you may be a pitta by nature, but if you have a vata imbalance, which most of us actually have a tendency towards because of the whole lifestyle and routines that we, you know, um, participate in. But um, you, if you have a, a vata imbalance, you want to, of course, um, take care of this as well. And you can do that by making sure that you're wrapped up, you don't have um, coldness coming in through your feet or in to your head and your um, organs up here. Um, you want to, you're encouraged to eat moist foods. So like soupy, one pot kind of foods with oils to help with um, digestion. Mm -hmm. You're also encouraged to sip on tea throughout the day, warm drinks, favor those over cold drinks. Eliminating cold, right? Sorry? Eliminating the cold, the cold. Yeah. Eliminating cold things. But yeah. isn't also yeah. like our lifestyle with, with uh, the, our digital lifestyle, is that not also butter? It's very butter enhancing, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. So it's important to, you know, try to create at least good rest times without any digital media so that you can just, you know, have an hour of peace and quiet, silence, um, being in nature, but wrapped up warm, have your, you know, scarf on. And see, it's kind of grandma wisdom, isn't it? It's it's common sense. It's simple, but this is the beauty of Ayurveda. It's so simple. Everybody it can understand it. You don't have to study it. It's a very simple tips um yeah everybody can follow it right of course no and you should study it because it's it the, the deeper you go the more you can tune in to these inner cycles within yourself and the more yes it makes sense to do these things but um it is an, an ancient knowledge that we're kind of like losing but we need to kind of get back to the basics of like using herbal teas, the right herbs for your dosha. Um, so like now, of course, vata time, we want warming spices, ginger, nutmeg, cinnamon, cardamom, these kind of warming flavors to add to our food. But then if you have a pitta dosha and pitta imbalance, then of course we need to balance that out and not use too many pungent spices and see there's a difference so like chili powder and um mixed with coffee will be too hot 
It's mm -hmm. too hot. That's too um, enkindling for the agony of pitta dosha. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's this is the fine balancing, the fine tuning, the refinement of of everything that so you. So it was like the basis is very easy. What we said to understand um, that. Vata means that and that, we have to take care. But when it really comes about understanding, yeah, it's now Vata time, but maybe you have a bit of imbalance, it's actually good to have a Yurveda your therapist next to you, right? Because exactly. I think those little details starts to be then a bit complicated. Where it's nice yes. to be good. So we talked about the Vata, now we're in Vata season. What comes next? What's the next season in Northern um, Hemisphere? <laughs> yes, so it's Kapha. But mm -hmm. um, that's later on, more in spring, but right through December, maybe January, until it starts getting wet and kind of even darker and duller in, you know, like halfway through January, February, mm -hmm. half of March, yeah. Then it will move into camp. But it, it will oh, stay in the ah, Yeah, it so will stay in the so for, for a long time, actually, in the Vata season? Even till early December, early early winter is still Vata season. Okay. Okay. So then where I have so actually... Also like, hmm? Oh, I wanted to carry on with some more tips for you. So things like oiling is very mm -hmm. important for Vata. So I mentioned that it's very dry. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you do like a daily morning oil massage or in the evening also you can do a foot, a foot and hand massage where you're rubbing in like essential oils with like a sesame seed oil to help you to relax the nervous system, to help you, you know, relieve any tension and leave you that much more um, free of, from anxiety, which is something that Vata Dosha has a tendency towards anyway. People with high Vata will have more anxiety, um, yeah, low confidence and, and things like that. Um, when they're out of balance, they feel like they can't trust their environment, they can't trust, you know, um, their own uh, common sense anymore so uh, that's one way that you can tell if if you're more better out of balance is is to monitor your emotions and your mood as well because it's not only about the physical body my ayurveda sees it as a holistic science so it's integrated with the body mind and your soul and that's where they over it overlaps with yoga beautiful said so understanding that ayurveda is about yeah actually think like self-care you what and we know about if you know your con, uh, constitution and you know what season you're in what i find difficult is actually to find if, for example, you're a Vata person and you know Vata season is now coming, when do you start to change your habits? I find it difficult. I'm very Pitta. And it happens to me every year in summer that I notice too late. <laughs> when I'm, all, I'm all already on fire, kind of. No? So when is it best, especially if you move into your bit more tricky season, to, to change? Yeah. To so that's that's the observing and i guess it gets easier when you notice um the environment around you so as soon as you start noticing in your body like oh my fingers are kind of dry or my joints are cracking you know it's like okay it's now the time to make sure that you have an almond milk in the evening and that you start to give yourself the oil massage and that you start to slow down and be a bit more um, uh, aware of your energy and where you're placing it rather than just kind of like zooming here and there and, you know, but really to calm down and to bring in, tune in more. 
that so really I think helps. Said at the beginning already know that it's, it's actually about slowing down and mm. witnessing, observing, and yes, uh, but not for all doshas. So if you're someone that's kapha predominant, yeah. you are you need the opposite. So like increases, like opposites balance. So if you're more kapha dosha, you're probably already sitting down on the sofa and enjoying Netflix or yeah, a more slower paced lifestyle. So what you need to do is balance that out by introducing a more mobile, active, social life where you're you, you have more strength um, to to be able to do that. So, like making sure that you're doing uh, yoga asanas in a more quicker, fiery sequence, for example. Um, you're, um, yeah, doing activities where there's there's a little bit more upbeat. To them. You. Thank you. So Ayurveda is often seen like a method of, of, of self-care yeah mm -hmm. but also may i think maybe it misunderstood as a science of what do i eat and not no if it's green apples right. or red apples <laughs> i've recently heard that it's actually in the ayurveda the idea of going through self-care through self-care going into enlightenment no it's a spiritual mm -hmm. practice can you say something about that right well I think for enlightenment, the whole process of that is to know thyself, you know, first and foremost, to be able to discern and manage oneself and one en one's energies and um, be able to focus our attention or our, our, our life force, our, our mind, in the direction that we choose rather than being caught up in the storm or the surface existence of life which wants to take us here which wants to take us onto this topic and that news uh, headline that grabs us emotionally but it's still it's still very on the surface level of existence this we don't know you know, there is a, there is mass media um, which tries to, to take us into this sense of fear, a sense of lack, a sense of, you know, not trusting and anxiety. It winds up that vata, that anxiety, like crazy. You know, it plays on our fears. To manipulate yeah because then we're just kind of like unbalanced whereas the whole goal of ayurveda and the whole goal of yoga is to be one pointed in ourselves rooted deeply within our own truth and yeah yeah it's and so we can't do that if there are these fluctuations of the mind as talked about in yoga we're we're then constantly running somewhere we're leaking out our, our vital energy we're leaking out our power so ayurveda is all about and yoga is all about turning that inwards so that then we can be more discerning about where we want to direct the attention, where we want to direct our force, our power, okay, for good, for good. It can only be used for good, right? Because, um, well, not that there is a good and there is a bad in yoga, right? There's no evil. It's, it's, it's all held within this space, but we can choose to direct our life force into the things that we know are upholding life on this planet, upholding life in this universe. 
sustaining and creating. Thank you. <laughs> so as I mentioned also at the beginning that um, Ayurveda and yoga, no, we mentioned already a few times, it's very close. And um, I'm personally interested a lot in to yoga teacher development. No, I'm uh, working on that a lot, having my Facebook group for yoga teachers, uh, etc. So how can yoga teachers apply the wisdom of Ayurveda into their work? That's, I'm also interested. No, we, uh, one theme, for example, we, we talked a lot about um, the physical health, but also you mentioned the mental health. Right. One, one surprising fact of yoga teachers, uh, some don't even imagine, is that a lot there's quite a lot of burnt out yoga teachers. Those mm -hmm. who really make a living from yoga have to work a lot, and they if they run really from one class to the other and always give and give and teach and teach, there is a, a risk of burnout. Yes. So how can they, for example, use um, the wisdom of Ayurveda? Um, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, it happens a lot in every um, every sphere now. We're, we can see it in every sphere that people are just burning out. And I, I know from my own background that, yeah, that's it's, it's caused by us as as we just talked about leaking this energy out you know as you mentioned giving 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 without really restoring and rejuvenating so ayurveda is the wisdom of longevity and it is also the wisdom and the truth of restoration of our vital energy and so there are many ways that you can do that um, you know, it could be, and this leads into, right into yoga, some of the beliefs is um, that your sexual energy, how, how much you're, um, how much you're moderating your sexual energy, but also the food and your lifestyle are kind of like the three pillars of health and how you can stay healthy. So with um, diet and lifestyle, you need to be making sure that you're eating the right foods for your constitution. If you're eating the wrong food for your constitution, then your digestion is going to be off. You're not going to absorb the nutrients from your food. No matter how good or how organic and great your diet is, you're not going to digest it. So you need to make sure that your number one is eating the right foods for your nature. And that's what I run a course on is how to know which foods, how to prepare them and how to bring back the rejuvenation, the nourishing foods specific to your dosha into your diet. And then there is the lifestyle. So we've talked a little bit about that already making sure that we're aligning with the sun cycle and the moon cycle so that means that we're eating our largest meal in the middle of the day when the sun is at its highest the sun uh, so um so above so below so like uh, our digestive fire is also burning the brightest in the middle of the day Mm -hmm. We have a larger meal in the middle of the day. And then in the evening, when it's nighttime, we shouldn't be eating. That's, uh, you know, like we, we have less digestive fire. So we're not going to be absorbing the food that we eat. We're actually distracting the, the energy where it needs to flow uh, from um, doing its digesting processes. So having a dinner just as the sun goes down or before the sun goes down between six and seven should be the latest time that you eat the milk. And then, um, yeah, um, making sure that you go to bed and you're resting by 10 is also really important because 
And I guess that also ties into activities that you do before you go to bed so that you're not ramped up. There are different times of the day when each dosha is more active. Um, so maybe when we talk about burnout yoga teachers, so right. as I referred from you at the very beginning, it's a lot of vata, no, a lot of mind and thinking. And well, also mobility, that like running around and 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 moving. So maybe before sleeping is not the best to to sit on the computer and. Yeah. No. Yes, exactly. Vata um, activity, you know, like so it, something that imbalances vata. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the opposite would be to do something more grounding and, you know, like I mentioned, the massage, the reading, the journaling, and um, allowing for yourself to smell earthy kind of aromas, essential oils, having a bath, you know, taking it easy, spending time with your family, playing a game. You know, um, and then, yeah, in the morning, again, rising as the sun rises or 45 minutes to an hour before the sun rises also gives you a lot of energy, surprisingly enough. And it might take a bit of adjustment, but when you rise before the sun, you're rising in the, the hour of Vata. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is a really good time for you to do some meditation, some journaling, something creative, you know, drink something warm and really nourish your body with, again, massage or gentle massage, gentle yoga. You mentioned the, for sure a little bit time of adjustment. You wanted to say that for most of the people who are not used to do that, that it's uh, yeah, it's beginning to take the decision to wait. I, I hear day. that a lot. That it's you know like oh you know I can't get out of bed until eight o'clock, but that already is kapha hour. That already the transition into kapha hours happened, so people will feel a bit heavier generally. You know, because uh, you're waking up in this in in at this time when kapha dosha is more predominant in your environment. I've uh, read recently that to really change a habit, you have to do something for 66 days. Actually, I'm psychology will say that. So maybe you just force yourself and wake yeah. up for 66 days on on the wrong time, and on day 67 you'll love it, right? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, it becomes your own habit. Yeah. <laughs> Morning. So this was well. all about talking about ourselves. No, if we are not okay, or to stay well, what we can do for ourselves. But also, we can can we use the wisdom of Ayurveda also working with others if we're in service uh, to others, like as a yoga teacher or any other uh, job, um, working with others, for example, in private classes, no teaching yeah. private classes in yoga. Mm -hmm. Is there anything what we can t take into consideration? Like every student mm -hmm. has a different dosha, mm -hmm. not different tendency. Um, how to apply that or on what to focus or what to remember? Yeah, so there, what to remember is that like increases like and opposites balance. It's very, very um, easy to, once we know that we, what, or we can see roughly which dosha person has, or we notice that their mood is of a certain dosha, let's say. Um, someone's feeling heaviness in the body, they feel dull. Then you might think, oh, okay, that's instantly kapha. But if we are looking at their physiology and they are actually depleted and they have, you know, no weight and they find it very difficult to put on weight, mm -hmm. then what appears to be kapha, this tiredness and depletion, dullness, depression, whatever, 
then we might say, oh, okay, they they need the opposite to balance. They need to have more um, energizing exercises. But in fact, no, they need to slow down. So it might be a little bit tricky for you to necessarily um, be able to discern that. So I do recommend that you also, you know, link up with an Ayurvedic health practitioner so that they can help you uh, with certain clients that maybe you're not sure on. But the general rule is like increases like an opposite balance. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah, because I, I guess like in working in private, for example, you know that for because you also work one on one is the if people come up with an idea and they have a goal right. they would like to change something mm -hmm. but again the, the change is often something we don't like so much <laughs> so uh they would like to have an outcome but the way there they have an idea mm -hmm. how to get there for example in yoga let's say a person who's very active yeah wants to do something for themselves and to have a little bit of self-care time uh, but would like them to do every time the Ayur, uh, uh, ashtanga class for example like a very strong mm -hmm. because they're used to you know they have a lot of pitta so right. as a as a yoga teacher it's also the, the balance to offer a little bit what they like because that's where mm -hmm. they will continue but actually offers the opposite, no? Where you say the opposite balances out. Mm -hmm. you know? exactly. add an ashtanga to the pitta type in, in, in summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's at one point they'll get uh, sick maybe even, no? Yes, yes. It's very true. So, you know, um, more restorative, more yin, more pranayama, which is cooling rather than heating. Um, maybe to find also the sweet balance in between what they like and dislike often the dislike is what is actually good for them <laughs> yes exactly We're giving them a little bit uh, what they like yes so, yeah you, you've mentioned already a few times also that ayurveda is not just for the physical well-being but also for the mental well-being mm. uh, for new teachers for example a very typical thing is that they're actually over nervous like it's a new situation for people they're not used to it to to stand in front of 30 people and to teach them and to guide them and actually to have to be calm mm. <laughs> and to have to ground them but if they're super nervous they're somewhere completely different not opposite right. and is there something what they can do maybe before class or when they're over nervous? Of course. So, you know, just make sure that you are realizing that this work is not you that's actually doing it. Um, although you are guiding a practice you know, but you always want to be coming from a place of being an open channel for work to happen, for the people to receive what they need to receive. So trying to come more into the space of openness, of spaciousness, rather than, you know, claiming that this is me doing this, it's not you alone. It's actually beyond yourself. It's, it's, this is the ancient wisdom that you are carrying for the good of others. And actually, Ayurveda, uh, yoga, meditation, um, they all rest on the Sankhya philosophy. And in that philosophy, there is this understanding that if we stop the mind, if we allow for the space to happen, then medicine can be extracted from the moment. You know, that every moment has a 
um, a divine beauty, wisdom, something that we can trust and feel supported by. So if you can tune into that vibration, then you can see how that affects. That's beautiful. I haven't heard that before, but I will definitely remember that. The, the now, the presence as the medicine, to find the medicine. Mm. It's, it's beautiful, Seth. Mm -hmm. So, talking about habits and rituals, like, is there any morning ritual you can recommend? Maybe right now, also playing for now, to wake up and then, so you said an hour Absolutely. earlier than you like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, allowing yourself to just tune in with that vibration. So, you know, taking yourself out of the picture and just realizing that you're made of these five elements, you know, so we can, we can do this now. It's just like looking at your hands and seeing and sensing, tapping into the yoga of this, this uh, form and feel these five elements, um, you know, like the blood pulsing, so that's the water, the air, you know, is watching, this is watching the process, the soul, and the breath is the air, and the structure, the form. And then just place your hands, over your eyes and really feel with every nerve ending that connection to the greater elements to your environment to the to the universe right so that you know that you can walk into your day with this universal identity rather than this individual sense of I am, I'm doing this and, and everything else, but more a sense of connection to that. And then, you know, get yourself a water, make sure that it's nice and warm, make sure it has a spice in it that's good for your dosha. And then you allow for yourself to do what you need to do creatively. So there, there's also the hygiene. Ayurveda is um, really guides us in ways that we can use uh, hygiene. We want to be cleansely to allow this divinity to live within us, dwell within. So um, tongue scraping is one of the essential things that you do before you brush your teeth because that just clears the tongue and I mentioned about the senses that these divinity lives in the senses so you know we want to make sure that we are um, yeah being able to taste well and we can do the neti pot, the nasya oils the neti pot, I think it's now also very important, no? And then isn't it in, in vata time in the winter? Oh, uh, it could be, it, it can be, it depends if you have um, you know, more nasal congestion, you, um, you have allergies, then neti pot is fantastic mm -hmm. for clearing the senses. I like to do it um, not every morning. But I certainly like to do it um, before I put the oil into my nose to, because the nose, right, is the gateway to the brain. And um, if we want to stop an aging mind, then in Ayurveda, we put oil everywhere. So in the ears, in the nose, you know, in our, on our food, just to help moisturize and get rid of this dryness that's associated with vata and aging rapid aging in the body and then of course like um you know meditation is 
by far like one of the the best ways to help you to regulate your mood and rejuvenate body mind and soul fantastic so as i mentioned at the very beginning into introduction your mother of three yes any ayurvedic advices on parenting oh. yeah <laughs> Well, it's it's interesting. It's it's never um, like with all three of them. It's been um, very different in terms of because we've been in different locations, right, um, and different scenarios. But you know, your kids they need to have warm, moist foods. You know, good oils, healthy oils in their food and their diet. Um, don't give them too much ice cream or icy cold things, uh, especially in the morning when the digestive digestive fire is weaker. You know, so if you were to have, you know, if they are going to have an icy drink, oh, which I don't give my kids, then um, <laughs> you would do that in the middle of the day. But yeah, certainly you want to take care of the digestive fire. Because in Ayurveda, we say that the root of all diseases or illnesses is in the digestive fire. So if you have a strong digestive fire and you're taking care of that, then you're going to reduce illnesses that show up. Great. Is mm -hmm. there anything you would like yourself add on or... We, we talked a lot, you uh, answered a lot of my question, but what are you personally working right on? Any projects? Or... Okay, so um, yeah, I have um, just started in Moksha Ayurveda, and that's in Santa Eugenia. And so we're offering, offering these rejuvenative therapies in uh, week-long punch of karma programs and natalie who's the manager and founder there she wants to make it very um very tailored towards yoga therapists and therapists that have burnout that you know need to take time to rejuvenate themselves so she is making it very easy also for families to be able to come there and be able to receive treatment while the kids are, you know, outside playing. Um, you know, the parent can be inside having their massage, having you know, their cooking workshop and or having their meditation. So... I think that's wonderful. I'm really happy to be part of this mm -hmm. project because I think it's so needed. And um, so if you wanted to come for a week to Mallorca, you can either stay uh, on the ground. It's a very different um, tiered um, pricing. Or there is a, a apartment that you can rent you and your family there are rooms in a very uh, nearby hotel so that's a great option and um, then there is also my online course which is sorry if you out more if people are interested in shall they directly contact you maybe on your website i show again absolutely you can website. contact me mm -hmm. and um you can also go to Moksha Ayurveda. And then there is my online um, conscious eating, conscious cooking workshop. So that's a six week program. And the waiting list for that is now open. So it's all about um, nourishing your dosha, making sure that you're eating the right foods so that you can uh, get the most out of your day out of your life because when we have good digestion is it the nurture your nature workshop you were mentioned when we were talking yes. yeah yes exactly so this starts on the 22nd of november 
Something yes, like that. that's where we have it coming up um, next. And then there is a uh, in on the ground workshop that we have created for autumn foods and diet and Ayurvedic wisdom, and that's on the fourth of November. Laro. It's a lot of interesting workshops, and uh, I might sign up. <laughs> you should. It would be yes. lovely to be with you. So after this conversation, I always actually said myself as a yoga teacher, if you're a yoga teacher, you always should have a physiotherapist by your side as a best friend, because we are not therapists, physical therapists, no? And there are always like moments where you come where you need someone who knows better. Mm -hmm. But after today's conversation, I would say you need a physiotherapist as one best friend and an Ayurveda therapist as the second best friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. beautiful to work them together. Thank you so Absolutely. much for your time, Amrita. I really enjoyed the conversation. I learned myself again something new. And uh, yeah, we might see us in one of your workshops. <laughs> Thank, um, thank you. you for inspiring us to take care of ourselves no? and to slow down. That's what I heard now. Mm. To observe. Take the time to observe and to notice, to stay healthy in order to stay healthy. Beautiful. And to wake up an hour earlier. <laughs> <laughs> then you won't need the coffee. <laughs> I know. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you, Agnes. Um, thank Beautiful. you. And bye-bye also to you, the others. Namaste. <laughs>